Strength I find to meet my trial seat Trusting in my father's wise best moment I've no cause for worry or for fear He whose heart is kind beyond all measure Gives unto each day what he deems best Lovingly it's part of pain and pleasure Mingling toil with peace and rest Service near me with a special mercy for each other. All my cares he fain would bear and cheer me. He whose name is Counselor and Power, the protection of his child and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid as your days your strength shall be in measure this the pledge to me he made help me then So to trust thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith, sweet consolation, offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meet me, dare to take as for a father's hand One by one The days, the moment fleet in Till I reach The promised land Good evening, saints of God. Good evening, saints of God. You are all welcome to tonight's midweek service. I was glad when it said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, because in the house of the Lord is where prayer is heard. And it is in the house of the Lord that we can come and pour our hearts before the throne of grace. By way of welcoming you, I want to quote... Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24, and it reads, And I shall come to pass, and it has come to pass that before they call, I would answer. And while they are yet speaking, I would hear. On this note, you are all welcome to today's midweek service. Shall we take our hymn house and open to him eight? Beside a 
us to guide us, our God, with us joining, ordaining, maintaining His kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning, the Lord was at our side, oh glory. Escape tribulation, thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. Saints of God, shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the manifold blessings that you have bestowed unto us that right from the beginning of the week you have been with us, right from Sunday up to today, the midweek, we are so grateful to you for sustenance, for life, for traveling mercies. We just want to thank you because, Lord, if not for you, Jehovah God would have been dead or would have been lying at places that, Lord, we can simply just not phantom. This hour we pray, thanking you for this opportunity to come before your throne of grace, knowing that our prayers will be heard. Thank you because we know you will do more than we have even asked. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Our memory text for this evening is taken from Psalm 122, verses 6 through to 7. Psalm 122, verses 6 through to 7. And it reads, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. And verse 7 reads, Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palace. And what do we say? Amen. On this note, we would invite Elder to give us some words of exaltation. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. I greet you in the name of Jesus our Christ. We thank the living Lord that he's giving us life to do what we have done today because he ordained it to be so and we are so grateful. Tonight we'll be looking at the subject of peace. We all do know that 2020, the year 2020 has been such a, a, a grueling year, a year that has tested the faith and the patience of many, a year that has challenged a lot of us, a year that has sent some people unprepared into their graves, a year that a lot of people have experienced trouble and anxiety. The year 2020, I believe, will never be forgotten. In our lifetime, it seems to be the most troubling year. But in all of this, we who believe in a living God believe that he is still in charge and that God has permitted all that has been happening to happen for a reason. Perhaps to wake some of us who are in spiritual slumber we get worried. Some cannot pay their rent. Some do not know when the next meal is coming from or where the next meal is coming from. Some do not know how to go back to school. And all of this creates anxiety and a fear of the future. So we do not know what is to come. And that creates a lack of discomfort which results in not having peace. To have peace is an overwhelming sense of calm and comfort. 
But sometimes in pursuit of peace, we keep looking in the, at the wrong places and in the wrong places. The one who created our world, the one who spoke and things came into being, things out of, out of nowhere came into existence, is the same person who we have labeled as the Prince of Peace in Scripture. Now the Bible in Matthew 5, 9 tells us clearly that blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. They who make peace will be called the children of God. And so tonight we are looking at peace as something that God gives, but at the same time, we have to work for it. We must not think that peace will be dropped on our laps, especially when this country is in a political season. And in a few days hence, we will be going to the pools. Already, the enemy of our souls isn't too happy and is beating the war drums in certain quarters. Now we, if indeed are called the children of God, then we should be working towards making sure that we propagate the message of peace. But there are a lot of people who do not have peace within themselves. But God is the one who gives peace, who brings peace to our hearts. And therefore, we need to be at peace with ourselves. And how can we be at peace with ourselves? Unless, of course, we have an encounter and a relationship with Jesus Christ himself. You will notice that Jesus was a man of peace. He was the author of peace. And when there was a storm, he could calm the storms just by speaking out the command. So he is the Prince of Peace. And yet, in the United Nations and other, other organizations that have been established to promote peace, they begin and end their deliberations without the, without the Prince of Peace. And that is sad indeed. We cannot look at the wrong places and expect to find peace. That will not be possible. So tonight, I pray, I'm praying that each and every one of us, especially we who are called the children of God, should not think that peace will easily come to us. The peace that we have held for some time now, indeed, must be maintained. The peace that we have had must not be taken for granted. Too many times we have seen people on, on our television screens people carrying their belongings as much as they could carry simply because there was war or civil war or some sort of conflict and they had to leave the place for the fear of their own lives. We are a peace-loving country, nation. And indeed, we keep saying it, that Ghana is a, is, 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 is a, is a land of peace. It is only a land of peace insofar as we are willing to, to, to fight for the peace and to maintain it. As Christians, what weapons do we have? We've got our knees and clapped hands and an utterance to our Father to pray for peace. And so I come with that suggestion that we should pray for peace from now till after the elections. We have to pray and ask God to intervene. And when we find people arguing so much that they will be at, the, at each other's throats, if that opportunity presents itself to us, we have to preach peace. For we are supposed to be agents of peace. Our Savior had a peaceful attitude and his children ought also to, by example, 
show that they also have a what? A peaceful attitude. Indeed, let us not relent in praying for peace. For it's only when you lose something that you begin to cherish its value. When there is chaos today, I do not know where to seek refuge. Because, truly speaking, I do not swim. I cannot go to my right or to my left. I simply don't know where to go. So I have no option than to continue praying for peace. And I pray that you too will do the same. That we do not take peace for granted. The peace that easily comes to us when we get up in the morning, go about our, our, our daily chores, and in the end come back, you realize that peace is a very peaceful country. But it only takes a spark of an unkind word or of an insult or of a harsh rebuke or something to ignite, to ignite conflict. And this is what we do not want. We want to be praying for our leaders that as they get and mount onto their platforms to talk to their followers, they should be guarded by their lips by what comes out of their mouths. It is these same hate speeches that plunged Rwanda into the, 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 the genocide that they have experienced. It is my prayer, my sincere prayer, that we have been called, like our, our memory verse talked about, it is not a new thing to pray for the land or to pray for the city or to pray for your country. It is very much in order. That should be our culture, to pray for peace, to pray for our leaders, to pray for the security agencies, to pray for the electoral commission, to pray for our homes, to pray for our families, to pray for our workplaces, that all things should remain as normal as we have experienced. It is only Jehovah who has indeed granted us all these privileges to enjoy peace the way we do, such that Ghana becomes the envy of other nations. I pray that we will be faithful in praying for peace, such that after the elections, we can come back to thank God for how much he has indeed heard us and answer our prayers. I want to thank God for the moment, this moment to share this short message with you, and I pray that you take it very seriously. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen. God is good, and all the time. God is good, all the time, and all the time. That is His nature. So, um, we want to thank and praise God for what he has done for us. You would all agree with me that throughout the whole week, he has been good to us. Is that not so? And so, shall we hear what the psalmist says? He says that, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. 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 Shall we also hear from uh, the psalmist again? Psalm 50 verses. Fifty. Psalm 50 verses. Twenty-three. Let's hear what the word of God has for us. He says that who so offered praise glorified me, and to him that ordered his conversation aright will I show the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Amen. On this note, we want to thank and praise him for all his kindness, 
and mercies towards us. I pray you, wherever you are, that you should bow your head. Thank God for all that he's done for you. Thank God for healing mercies. As you bow, may you whisper a prayer. Pray for your job and for the security he has granted you. Pray for traveling mercies he has granted you day in and day out. From our various homes, he grants us traveling mercies. And through the traffic and through these dangerous roads, he leads us to our various places and sends us back safely without a scratch. We ought to be thankful to him for all his benefits towards us. Shall we also thank him for the healing mercies he's granted us? Pray for the healing mercies he's granted us because it is he that gives life and at the same time we are told that by his stripes we are indeed healed. Pray that those burdens that was brought before his throne, indeed he answered every one of them and he has put laughter on our mouths. His name deserved to be praised. As you bring your prayer of praise and thanksgiving to an end, shall we have a word of prayer? Our most gracious everlasting Father, we just want to thank you for your manifold blessings towards us. We just want to thank you for the food that you give us to eat, for the shelter of our heads, for traveling mercies you grant to us to and through the busy streets of Lord, wherever that we find ourselves. We just want to thank you. Lord, we want to thank you for our various jobs, that you give us jobs that we can go to, and then, Lord, we retire back to our various abode. We just want to thank you. We just also want to thank you Lord, for the various opportunities that you have granted us, for our various places of work, business, those that, Lord, have completed school successfully, we just say, may your name be praised, because it is you who give wisdom and understanding, and it is you who has seen us true, even up to this point. And so we say, Lord, may your name be praised. This very hour, we want to pray thee in the mighty name of Jesus, pra praising and thanking you for if we mean to count everything that you have done for us, Lord, we will not live here. But we are trusting and believing that, Lord, with you on our side and with all that you have done for us, we say, may your name be praised now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now it is time for us to confess our sins before the throne of grace. It is time for us to now confess our sins before the throne of grace and we are told that if if we want our prayers to be heard this is the time for us to confess all our sins and indeed he is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness if we deeply confess and repent of them I'll give you some few minutes so that you pray that prayer of faith that the, indeed he has forgiven us of our sins. Shall we be bringing our prayer of confession to an end? Shall we pray? Lord God Almighty, we just want to thank you for giving us an opportunity to come before your throne of grace and confess our sins before your throne of grace. For indeed, your word tells us that if we come and confess our sins, you are a faithfulness for the whole nation. Lord, 
we want to pray in a special way, committing your church as well into your care and keeping. We have sinned as a church as well into your care and keeping. Have mercy upon us. It is individuals in the church that makes up the church. And so, Lord, we as individuals have sinned and has fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, we say, may you have mercy and pity on us. And Lord, help us. Grant us the enabling spirit and strength to be able to overcome those besetting sins and those sins that easily beset us. Lord, we ask, give us the strength. May your spirit not be withdrawn from us. This we have prayed through Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Through 
into another season of prayer. We are looking at praying for Ghana. We are praying because of the elections that are just about five days away. We are asking God to take charge of the election. And we are praying for peace of God to be established during and after the elections. And so find a comfortable posture as we seek the Lord in prayer. We will do this for about 40 seconds or 45 seconds and then we'll go on to the next prayer point. Shall we pray for Ghana? now be praying to our second prayer point. We want the Lord God Almighty to take charge of every heart. There are some who want to foment trouble. The Lord should take control of those hearts. And that any person wanting to plot evil or nursing evil we are committing that person into God's hands and that they shall not succeed in what they intend to do. So let us pray for that. We are now going to pray our third prayer point. What we are doing is to commit the political parties and their actors into God's hands. We pray that they will not incite their followers to do the unthinkable. We pray that God shall rather use them as agents of peace in their campaigns and that their campaigns will be conducted in an atmosphere of peace. Let the accusations of, you know, against each other, other uh, against each party stop. And let them think of Ghana first. Let's commit the political parties and their leaders into God's hands. After which I would summarize all the three prayer points. Let's pray.
our God and our Father, we thank you for the country called Ghana. We thank you, dear God, that we have indeed been privileged to know what peace is. We have lived our days in peace and sometimes we have failed to thank you for it. Today we come saying, Lord, accept our thanks. We thank you that you have spared our lives and that we go morning to evening doing the things we normally do for a living, come home and rest, all in an atmosphere of peace. We thank you for giving that to us. In a very special way, Lord, I'm praying for those who are plotting evil during this political season. Father, may you arrest them, for we can only pray to you. May we, O oh Lord, commit them into your hands. I pray, Father, that whatever evil minds are doing, they will indeed, you will disarm them. And that all that they plot, all that they plan shall come to naught. Father in heaven, we commit the political parties as well as the actors and the leaders into your care. When they go to sleep, may you give them dreams of peace. And of the fact that, Lord, they are favored to be leaders of these political parties. I pray, Father, that this country, through them, will go through this political exercise and that we shall come out free. You are the one who chooses leaders for a country. May we accept that which you yourself will choose for us, no matter what. Let those who lose the elections concede in good faith for the sake of this country. We ask your angels, O oh Lord, to be widespread in every corner of this country, pleading, O oh Lord, that you secure us and protect us. We have families, we have children. We ask that your peace will indeed permeate our home, our societies, every nook and cranny in this country, and that, Lord, we shall come back to thank you for all the good things that you continue to do for us as a people. We thank you. We bless you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sadum, no dime canda, 
say to him again um, shall we continue our prayer um, concerning the elections um, I would employ you wherever you are to bow down your heads and take the following prayer points um, the first one is change of heart for those doubling in all manner of rituals in order to win power so as you bow pray for people that are so desperate to win power and would do all manner of things in order to cling onto power the second prayer point is that you pray that the lord grant us a divine outcome that his ordained candidate should win and the loser as well should accept the outcome As we continue to pray, shall we also pray committing the Electoral Commission into his care and keeping because he is the referee. And so we will pray that he will be impartial and resist any attempt to be influenced by any persons or group. I will be wrapping up on those three prayer points. And then let's continue to remember um, these politicians in our prayers because as they travel the length and breadth of the nation, that the good Lord will protect them against any form of accidents so that they will come in one piece so that we won't hear any bad news. shall we pray Lord God Almighty we just want to thank you Lord for a time like this that we would have to go to the polls and choose a leader in order to lead this nation Lord we pray that Lord let your desired candidate so win we also want to pray that those that are doubling all manner of schemes in order to win Lord may you have mercy touch their hearts and give them a change of mind and hearts. So do we continue to pray, committing the electoral commission into your care and keeping Jehovah God. May they be firm. And above all, Lord, we pray that, Lord, may they not be influenced by any persons or group of people. That, Lord, the best candidate should win. And the person that you have ordained should emerge victorious. We also want to pray in a special way, committing our politicians into your care and keeping as they travel the length and breadth of the nation 
on a campaign tour, we ask that may you grant them traveling mercies, that you protect them against any form of accidents. This we have asked and have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Knowing this, is anything too hard for the Lord? Certainly the answer is no. And so what is your uh, burden? The good book tells us that we should come to the foot of the cross and lay down our burdens. And he who is the burden bearer will bear it all. And so what prayer have you brought this evening? I would employ you that wherever you are, that as we intercede on behalf of our family members, as we pray, committing our church members, that the good Lord should protect our church and uh, our family members into his care and keeping, that you protect them during, before, and after the elections. And as we draw near to the end of the year, People are rushing, rushing up and down. And so we ask for protection over their lives and that the good Lord will protect them and avert any form of accident and any form of untimely death. And so shall we pray concerning these points? And as we pray, may you remember those that are sick amongst us. Anybody you can remember in your neighborhood in church, at the workplace, remember all such ones. And I pray that whatever prayer point that you have and prayer request, chip it in. I give you two minutes. Whisper it before the throne of grace. God has opened his hands wide and is waiting on us. And he would answer our prayers according to his riches and glory. And what do we say? Shall we pray? Shall we bring in our prayer to a close? Amen. The psalmist says in Psalm 6, verse 9, The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord accepts my prayer. Knowing this, let us believe that the good Lord has heard our prayer and he's going to do exactly what he has said that he would do. Amen. Shall we take our hymnals and open to him 474. Take the name of Jesus with you as our closing hymn. Just name 
oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of earth precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of earth take the name of Jesus earth oh Assured from every snow If temptations round you gather Breathe that holy name in prayer Precious name, oh how sweet Hope of earth and joy of heaven Precious name, oh how sweet Hope of earth and joy of Oh, the precious name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy. When His loving arms receive us, eyes on skills of tongue employ. Precious name, oh, how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. At the name of Jesus bowing, fallen prostrate at his feet. Kings of kings in heaven crown him when our journey is complete. Precious name, oh how sweet Hope of earth and joy of heaven Precious name, oh how sweet Hope of earth and joy of And now, all oh people of God, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may the peace which we have been privileged to have and enjoy, may that peace follow us like a shadow. When we rise up from bed and when we go back to sleep, may this peace, O oh Lord, be yours now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>